Hi everybody, so yes, now in this video, let's look at how the key impacts of an indirect tax can vary depending on elasticity. The impacts we're gonna focus on very much, consumer burdens, producer burdens, and at times even government revenue. Let's start by looking at price elasticity of demand and say, look, if demand is price elastic, what will the key impacts be versus when demand is price inelastic? Let's start with price elastic demand. And what I've drawn is the diagram of an indirect tax, but now with a demand curve that's quite shallow, so we can see our supply shift there. Let's apply the same concepts that we learned in my previous video. By first working out the area of government revenue, go to the new equilibrium, work out the vertical distance between the two supply curves. So new equilibrium at B, vertical distance of BC, that's the tax per unit multiplied by all units up to Q2, gives us government revenue of the box P2BCE. Now we break that up to look at the consumer burden and the producer burden. The consumer burden is just the difference in price portion of that box. Let's label that C, so P2, P1, BD, and the rest is the producer burden. Call that P over there. So what we can clearly see is that when demand is price elastic, the consumer burden is lower, the producer burden is higher. We can also make a conclusion about government revenue and because quantity falls a lot, right? Demand is price elastic. So the fall in quantity is proportionately greater than the increase in price. That big fall in Q means less units are being produced and sold, i.e. less units are subject to the indirect tax. So the government is gonna be making less revenue. So government revenue is also lower when demand is price elastic. If we go to the extreme and assume that demand is perfectly price elastic, we can say that in that situation, the consumer burden will be nothing the producers will take the entire burden. And that's because if you imagine a completely horizontal demand curve, well, when the supply curve shifts upwards or shifts to the left, there'll be absolutely no change in price. So the consumer burden is none, the producers take everything. The government revenue will be the lowest in that situation. What about when demand is price inelastic? Apply exactly the same concepts onto this diagram, now with a slightly steeper looking demand curve. Demand is price inelastic. Again, let's work out the government revenue to the new equilibrium, which is B, the vertical distance between the two supply curves, BC multiplied by units up to Q2, the government revenue is P2BCE. Break that up into consumer and producer burdens, the consumer burden, the difference in price portion, the producer burden, the rest, and we can now see the opposite is true when demand is price inelastic, the consumer burden is significantly higher, the producer burden much lower, makes sense because now with demand being priced inelastic, producers feel they can raise their price a lot, i.e. they can transfer a lot of the indirect tax to consumers without a massive loss in demand, without a massive, massive loss in revenue. So that's why consumer burden is higher. We can also make a link to government revenue. Now that quantity hasn't fallen that much, it's fallen, but proportionally less than the increase in price, there are still a lot of units that are subject to the indirect tax. So the government revenue will be higher when demand is price inelastic. What about if demand is perfectly price inelastic? PD zero with a vertical demand curve will just go to the extremes. The consumers will take the entire burden there. The difference in price will be the exact value of the indirect tax. The producer burden will be nothing. The government revenue the highest in that situation. What about price elasticity of supply? Well, this is a good exercise for you. If we start with price elastic supply, that's a diagram you can draw and apply exactly the same process. So in this situation, you'll have a normal demand curve, but have quite a shallow looking supply curve, then shift it upwards and apply the same process. And in that situation, what you'll find is the, the consumer burden is higher. A lot of the tax will be transferred to consumers via higher prices. The producer burden will be lower in that situation. What about if supply is perfectly price elastic? Well, in that situation, your supply curve is completely horizontal you shift that upwards, the change in equilibrium, the change in price is exactly equal to the value of the indirect tax. So in that situation, the consumer burden will be everything. Consumers are paying a higher price equal to the indirect tax. The producer burden will be nothing. Same process when we look at price inelastic supply. Again, you can draw the diagram. This time, just make sure that your supply curve is drawn quite steep with a normal looking demand curve. When we shift that supply curve upwards, you'll find in that situation, the consumer burden is lower the producer burden is much higher. And what about if supply is perfectly price inelastic? Well, then the supply curve is completely vertical. The supply curve cannot shift upwards in that situation. So the producer burden will be everything. 
there will be no consumer burden at all. If the supply curve doesn't shift, there is no change in equilibrium, meaning consumers are not paying any kind of higher price. The producers are taking on the entire burden of the indirect tax. So that's how, guys, the key impacts of indirect taxation very much depends on elasticity of demand, yes, but also of supply. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video when we look at subsidies. Thank mm -hmm. you.